So you think you want to get into the old car hobby. You want a classic, you want something collectible, you want something distinctive. You're not looking for a show car, you don't want a race car. You just want like a daily driver, something you can get into and just drive it to work or take a nice cruise with it or go out on a town for a night. You're not looking for perfection. You just want cool. John found cool. You, 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 this is like the jackpot of cool. Exactly what I was looking for. I think it's just exactly what most people who have it in their mind that they want to get involved in a car like this, I think this is what they picture. Now, they don't want a 57 Chevy, they don't want a Roadrunner, they don't want, I mean, some people do. Yeah. But you can't really have fun with those cars. You can't just pile your buddies in and go road trip and, you know, carefree, just go. Yeah, there's a lot of expectations with that stuff. Right. Yeah. But this is just pure fun. Yeah. You know, and you know the great thing about a car like this, you know, so let's say like you're styling in your McLaren, right, or your, your Bugatti or whatever it happens to be. You roll up, you park next to this thing, one car is going to get all the attention. One car is going to get all the smiles, all the thumbs up, all of the questions, and it's going to be this one. Tell us how you came about this thing. The basic gist of it is that I messaged a guy on Facebook, so I was just scrolling through Marketplace looking for probably parts or bikes or something, and it popped up. And I messaged him. We weren't able to meet, connect at all. Four months later, out of the blue, we get a message, and the guy's like, do you want to come check it out? We came out and checked it out, and it's here now. We took it for a quick test drive, looked at a few things, it was dark, and we brought it home. So he got it for a really good price, and he drove it home, which yeah. is like more than you can say about most, you know. Most I wasn't expecting to. Right. Yeah. Well, you paid about, you paid for this car what most people would have paid to have their Roadrunner towed. <laughs> More or less. Possible, yeah. All right. So it's a 1962 Caddy. Yeah. Sedan. Sedan Deville. Okay. So basically a base model. It's got four cigarette lighters, but no power windows, no power locks, no air conditioning. But it's nice. But okay. it has cool amenities. Yeah. Right. Like here, come over here. Come over here. Right. He's been geeking out about this. It's I'm great. I, yeah, I'm in love with this mirror. So, you know, you used to have modern cars, you get your power side view mirrors, right? And they're great when they work, right? But they're, they're run through a body control module and all sorts of relays and weird wiring harnesses and all kinds of craziness that when there's a failure involved in them, it's like, forget about it. It's just, it's not worth fixing. Then you got this. Here, come around here, look at this. Completely analog, right? Every position. You know, it's like infinitely adjustable. You can just like twit, you know, tweak around with it as you're going down the road. Right? It will last forever. It's 60 years old now, and 60 years from now, it'll still work exactly the same way. Like, this is the kind of stuff that makes these old cars special. You know? What else? There's a lot of other features on this car. There's a lot to it. Like everybody in the car gets their own lighter and ashtray, and either the dashboard or the doors. There's a ton of space. There's rear armrest, which it's stuck. <laughs> That's right. But it's there. Like, and I didn't a, get a rear armrest in my crown pick. And it's a hard time. So it's six feet. Basically, of, yeah. Of window between the front post. And these, these, are, these, these curved front posts are just gorgeous. Everything about the car is great. Everything about it is beautiful. It's timeless. It's timeless. Even the disco era spokes. Those are legit wire wheels. They're, they're legit, exactly. Yeah. So this is like 62, 63 was kind of the area, uh, the era where they started getting more away from the four foot tall tail fins. Right. So it's getting a little bit more reserved. Shortly after this, they got really boxy and square. Right. So like, as far as design goes, it's excellent. It's the pinnacle. Yeah, it's basically the best year. It's a silhouette of this thing going down the street. I first saw it, he pulled into the parking lot at the shop. And the first thing I noticed was just, just a pure silhouette of this thing. It has so much presence. You know, you can't find, you can't find this kind of presence in anything built in the last 30 or 40 years. No. You know, there's nice cars built in the last 30 yeah. or 40 years, but not like this. No. This is a statement. Yeah. And one of the statements is you got a lot of work to do to it to make it. Yeah. There's a lot that needs to be done with it. Basically, I'm going to have to touch everything on the car. All right. But this is a keeper now. You're going to hold on to this. Yeah. All right. So for the average person, let's give them a tour of what this car, what, what the car needs, what you plan to do with it so they get they get an idea because okay now we know you bought 
a running driving classic that's a little rough around the edges, but it's all here. Yeah. So, but I, I've seen this a thousand times, so I know that what you've got here is pretty much representative of what anybody who picks up a car like this is going to have to deal with. It was just kind of a derelict. Somebody pulled it out, and I picked it up from them. All right, so you drove it home. Yeah. It's got, here, let's, let's go under the hood. Okay. The original Caddy 390 is gone. And they were good motors. They were good motors. <laughs> Some rough. It does that every time. They were good motors, but this puts this kind of car miles ahead. It's a 350 Chevy out of what looks to be like those exhaust manifolds, like a 69 Nova, 70 Nova. The manifolds aren't original to this engine as far as I could They're tell. Not? I think that they were just something somebody had laying around. Because okay. the timing tab being where it is, Austin figured out that that was probably 86 to 88. Would have okay. been like a TBI engine. But they put a Rochester two barrel on it and didn't bolt it down. You know, you get your dual PCV valves. Yeah. <laughs> Emissions friendly. Uh, so the Caddy used a very unique set of mounts. It's different than all of the others. And you can see on this one here, they fabricated these aluminum brackets. They're kind of like a race car. It's just kind of like an elephant ear set up. So I, I, why is it crooked though? Did you figure that one out? I have no idea. They just, maybe they just it's didn't just measure? It's just not or? in there, right? That's really all there is to it. But it doesn't affect the way it runs. No, it drives fine. That's what's really important. Yeah. Tons of room under here for anything you wanted to do. I mean, even if, like, oh, that, twin turbos. That's a thought. <laughs> all right, so going through the rest of the car. Yes. What other areas need attention on this thing? Well, obviously there's cosmetic stuff, which isn't really that important for now. Right. Um, but there's, like, if you look down there, there's a power wire coming off the starter. That's just wire nuts. You can probably, yeah, pull it yeah. out. Redneck engineering. That's, you know, if it's good for a house, it's good for your car, I guess. Yeah. Which is, well, this is all fine and dandy until you put the car in a service and you got to go through a few puddles and then yeah. it starts to corrode and everything. So it's like little things like that. When you find stuff like that, those are the first things you want to fix. You, know, you want to go for your, obviously, you go for the leaks, you go for anything that's like mechanically dangerous. Oh, yeah, or we fully service it. Yeah. Yeah. And then your next step is to go through the car and find all of these little repairs and, and whatnot that were done by uh, mechanics. Yeah, people, you know, people living in their shed. <laughs> people living in their shed, right? Yeah. <laughs> and fix all of that stuff. How's the interior on this thing? The interior was really good until we sat in it. <laughs> so, like the upholstery, original, fairly excellent, but it's 60 year old fabric and the more you use it, the more it's gonna rip. The driver's side of that seat is pretty screwed up already and we've only had it running for a few days. But otherwise, the only thing that I'm really concerned about is finding this replacement cloth, because I want to redo all of that as it is. That, these seat belts are great. Come here, look at, look at the mounting points on these seat belts. Look how much room you've got. This is how they did it in the 60s. This car wouldn't have had factory seat belts, they were optional. You had to order them, and so that was their solution for installing seatbelts on these cars. Yeah. Oh God, it's like, it's like a house. You, you don't have to worry about riding with somebody else. I still would have that phobia about riding with another yeah. guy, but that's all right. It still is. You got enough real estate that. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be fixed. Like this won't stay closed. Just, you know, day-to-day -day stuff. It's little stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of piecemeal, but the important stuff is going to be replacing the front floorboards because the passenger side is a ghost of what used to be there. Basically, the only thing holding that together is carpet and hope. But the frame is in good shape, right? It seems that way. I've been underneath it. I didn't see anything too obvious that was a problem. Just, you know, floorboards, sheet metal, that kind of stuff. Are we missing the back cigarette lighters? Oh, no. We took those and put them up front to see if they worked. Oh, okay. Everybody, in the, back in the day, everybody smoked, sometimes all at the same time, so everybody had to have their own ashtrays, their own cigarette lighters. Yeah. What I just did this morning was just get it off a gas can. 
brought it home. It just had a five gallon can in the trunk. So I just, it got lost somewhere between here and Chattanooga for some reason and finally made it here. So I threw it in today. Hopefully we'll be able to take it for a spin. The trunk is a lot more solid. I mean, it's got a couple of small holes, There's but it's a, a lot holes, more yeah. solid than I, I would have you know, thought it would be. I was expecting it to be worse. When we looked at it, the whole trunk was just full of garbage. There was like just piles of jack stands and dirty magazines, you know. We bought a, we bought a dart, the Plain Z. Oh yeah. When we bought that car, it was a complete car. And the trunk was filled with garbage and it had, oh, I'm sorry, not garbage. The trunk was filled with groceries that had sat for like 20 or 30 years. Ugh. So when we cleaned it all out, there was no, like, when I say there was nothing, I mean like literally everything was gone from the from the back of the front seat to the back of the trunk it was all missing thankfully most of this is here there's a few holes there's a few places where it's just been banged up like this is rotten they obviously painted over it to keep the rust from getting worse but you know but the car nothing that's not fixable the car itself is structurally solid yeah you know it's got good bones and for a long-term project for for a uh, for an economical project, something you could do at your house and, and keep it at that realistic level where the car stays fun. Yeah. You know, it's perfect. I've got a ton of ideas for this thing. I don't, I don't get jealous of too many cars. I'm yeah, jealous of this thing. This is, it's just, it's too cool. It's too cool. It so, doesn't run very well. It doesn't. And you get, what kind of gas mileage are you getting with this thing? Uh, on the way back from the shop, it was like nine point something. Yeah. That's rough. When you're measuring it in decimal points, it's time to improve. Yeah, especially with yeah. the price of the stuff these days. Yeah. All right. So let's let's climb around under here. Okay. And see what we can see. Sure. And uh, we'll make it run right, yeah. or as best as we can. Sounds great. And move on. Right the first time. Oh, 
Oh, hey. Hold on, hold on. We gotta just put a breather in here. What do we do for the time being? It's uh, just one piece of day. See how much water is hard on that? Yeah. Now look how much fuel it wants. Your gas mileage. What was that? I just found your gas mileage. Yeah. Appreciate it. No problem. It's what I do. Single digits suck. I got you definitely into the double. Because we want to make a jump with us. Sponsor? Yep. See, the only thing I've ever owned with a carburetor was a lawnmower. It's on seven cylinders.
no pinging, right? Stop it. Yeah. Oh, I guess they Kick down's out of whack. What? Feels like kick down's out of whack. I should have stepped down. We gotta give it just a little more timing. No bueno. It's right here. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. That's way better. You can tell as soon as you nudge the gas, you can tell if it's right or not. Yeah, that's way better. Welcome to the world of double digit gas mileage. I appreciate that. No problem, it's the least I could do. And I have carefully calculated out what the least I could do would be. Oh. That was it. Well, thank you. No problem. on the distributor. I'm guessing you got one cylinder in this motor that's got very low compression. It's possible. Because that little bit of nudge and timing is all it needed to like kind of smooth out. Yeah. I don't know how many miles are on the engine that's in it. It's just been swapped. It could have 200, 300,000 on it already, I don't know. So, what do you think? It's better. Much, much better than new. Yes. Right. I mean, you know. At you least know. better than I got it. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's just like tweaking around and pulling out a distributor. And one PCV valve at a time. Okay. You know, you need a breather on one side and a PCV on the other. That made a big difference in the way the carburetor adjusted. It really did. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that was a mistake. Well, get this thing to the shop, pull the plugs and do all of that good stuff. Right? Make sure yeah. that's all copacetic. Yeah. So, so what are your long-term plans for this car? Make it good, drive it wherever I want to. It's good so, the way it is. There's a lot of stuff that I still have to do with it. Yep. You know, fixing rust from the floors, because passenger side's just a ghost. 
Um, but just want to make it better, make it drive, make everything work. So right now there's no heat. And there's heat, but there's no blower. You got some vibrations. So there's mechanical stuff that needs to be addressed too. The brakes are all out of whack. Doesn't drive straight. Needs an alignment real bad. Tires sounds are like, shot. You sounds know. like a, either hanger bearing or the CVs right in the back is. Yeah, I wouldn't too. be surprised. Yeah. But overall, I was surprised by how you know once it's rolling, man. It rolls good. Yeah, it rolls really good. Yeah, even taking on what is left of Riley Parkway yeah. when we brought it back, it wasn't bad. So, I love it, man. Thank you. So, you gonna keep our viewers up to date on your progress with this car? Yeah, we've actually shot a little bit of something while I was working on it when it was. 25 degrees outside yeah um, not a lot came good of that but we're gonna keep updating as we've got it so you have a YouTube channel uh, we do have the the one that we started to just do stuff like this right um, it's daddy's money garage daddy's money we're gar broke. daddy's money garage yeah there you go guys daddy's money garage if you want to follow updates on this car we'll do some stuff on our channel with it but I guess yeah. you'll be doing smaller stuff on yeah just kind of trying to like Whatever I cover, just small updates, kind of stuff that I'm going to be tackling on it. It's not necessarily the stuff that everybody's going to do. Right. So. Yeah, but still people like to watch other people yeah. screw out the cars. Yeah, it's just going to be how I like it by the time it's done, so. All right. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. Yeah. See you tomorrow.